Our second example assumes a phase angle of minus pi L over 6 radians. This time, the sine wave appears to be shifted to the right when compared to the original. The equation of these types of sine wave is y equals sine of t plus alpha. We have already seen that alpha and phi are related. Actually, phi is also related to omega by phi equals alpha over omega. To summarize, a change in magnitude affects the amplitude of a sine wave. A change in angular velocity affects the frequency and periodic time of a sine wave. While a change in phase angle affects the phase shift of a sine wave. It is entirely possible to have varying amplitude, frequency and phase shift occurring simultaneously. In this example, we consider a phase of magnitude 2, angular velocity 2 radians per second and phase angle pi L over 6 radians. Notice the sine wave being projected. It has an amplitude of 2, twice the frequency and is slightly shifted to the left. Our next example considers a phase of magnitude 2, angular velocity 3 radians per second and phase angle pi L over 2 radians. The resulting sine wave has an amplitude of 2, triple the frequency and is slightly shifted to the left. The general equation for any sine wave is given by y equals m sine omega t plus alpha where m equals magnitude, omega equals angular velocity, and alpha is equal to the phase angle. The equations for these last two sine waves are y equals 2 sine 2t plus pi L over 6, and y equals 2 sine 3t plus pi L over 2. We shall now apply our newly discovered knowledge of phases to electric circuits supplied with alternating current, or AC. Let us begin by considering the three types of components commonly present in electrical circuits. Resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Each of these will oppose current flow from an AC source. There are some facts to be mentioned regarding current voltage relationships for each of the three components. For resistors, the voltage drop is in phase with the current flowing through. Hence, there is a phase difference of zero degrees between voltage and current. For inductors, the voltage drop is 90 degrees ahead, or leading with the current going through. In the case of capacitors, the voltage drop is 90 degrees behind, or lagging, with the current through the capacitor. Let us now combine two components together in series, starting with a capacitor and resistor. The current through both components will be the same as is the rule for components connected in series. For this reason, the current may be considered as the reference phaser. The resistor voltage VR will be in phase with the current, while the capacitor voltage VC will be lagging the current by 90 degrees. By Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage appearing across the two components must add up to the value of the supply voltage. We must remember, though, that the component voltages are shifted by 90 degrees with each other. Hence, their addition has to be done vectorially. The vector addition K 
can be performed by applying Pythagoras' theorem. The result gives the magnitude of the supply voltage. V supply squared equals Vc squared plus Vr squared. Like all vectors, the supply voltage has both size and direction. The direction may be found by applying trigonometry. Tangent of phi is equal to Vc all over Vr. In our final example, we shall analyze a series combination involving an inductor and resistor. Once again, the current will be the same through both components, as they are series connected, and will be taken as reference. The resistor voltage VR will be in phase with the current, while the inductor voltage VL will be leading the current by 90 degrees. By Kirchhoff's voltage law, the voltage drops appearing across the two components will again add up to the value of the supply voltage. The component voltages are shifted by 90 degrees with each other again, and their vector addition will give the magnitude of the supply voltage. V supply squared is equal to VR squared plus VR squared. The phase angle can be found using trigonometry like before. Tangent of phi equals VL all over VR. We hope you've enjoyed this video and that it was helpful in explaining the basics of phases. For any difficulties or queries, feel free to contact us back on this user profile and we'll get back to you. Have fun! Thank you.